GameMaker now handles downloading the specific modules you request at runtime. You will see a new dialogue for this the first time you start a new version. Does that mean I won't have to install like seven gigabytes of stuff that I'm never gonna use every time I update now? Let's find out. All right, here we go. This is a welcome change. Installing runtime 22.11.100. something. Uh, I semi-regularly run games for Windows, uh, OGX, sometimes HTML5, um, sometimes Windows YYFC, and sometimes Linux. I have no interest in uh, TiVos, macOS, iOS, and Android at the current moment, although I guess I will install uh, GX YYC, even though I don't have that set up currently. And this should install in like half the time that I usually have to sit here and wait when I install a new Game Maker version. Usually that's like get up from the computer and come back in a half hour sort of ordeal then like be surprised at where my hard drive space is going. So this is definitely a welcome change. All right, uh, that was definitely faster. Uh, realistically, I probably did not need to install the YYC build tools uh, because I do use those not very often and I probably could have saved a little bit of time and space by not installing those this time. Um, there is a particular function which I'm interested in this update because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a math nerd, I'm a CS nerd, and uh, that is gonna be the array for each function that has been added. Uh, you can see there is an entire list of new array functions that has been added in this current beta, and there is one particular array function which I happen to care a lot about, and this, this is for iterating over every element of an array. Um, Right, as you can probably tell by the fact that I just installed this about two seconds ago, uh, I have not experimented with this yet, and I am I am going to be testing this out uh, on the fly today. So this is for the uh, November 2022 betas. If you are on um, IDE version 22.11.0.227 and runtime 22.11.0.210 or later, uh, or if you're just on stable runtime 2022.11, um, then you should have access to this. Uh, there is a handy-dandy array for each function. I'm going to close this inspector because that's taking up space and I don't really need it. Um, so for each loops, for those of you who are uh, unaware with the term, are basically a, um, a shorthand for a regular for loop that you would use to iterate over an array, or sometimes another data structure, but usually an array. And... In GameMaker's case here, it looks like we're just going to take a, uh, an array, we're going to take a function that is going to act on every value in the array, and we're going to uh, we're going to run that function on every element of the array. We're not going to have to do any, like, for index i equals zero, um, value equals array at index i, and none of that fancy nonsense. And we're going to just, uh, we're going to have a bit more of a functional approach to writing code. Um, and that's also a theme in some of the other new array functions that have been added. Uh, but array 4 h is probably the one that I'm most interested in, and, um, and I'm going to be talking about that mostly in this video. This is going to take an array as an input, it is going to take a function uh, as a, a second parameter, and I assume that it is this function, and I don't, I don't think this is documented yet. Yeah, this is not documented yet, but if this works the way that array 4 h and any other sane language does, uh, this is going to take a value. And if I have an array, that's something like, let's call it, um, in, a, in keeping with tradition, uh, let's actually go back to the original uh, video that I made on for each loops about two years ago. Um, we're going to pass in this array of words into this array for each function. We're going to show debug message the value and if this goes according to plan, uh, we should have uh, just all of the all of the words popping out in the console down here. All right. Unless they somehow managed to screw this up or did something weird to it. Um. All right. Awesome. We have the quick brown fox jumped over me, popping out in the console array for each. So uh, I'm going to do some other um some other experiments with this. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, time trial versus the version that I, I wrote two years ago and the version of this array forge some function that I sometimes uh, write uh, myself in various projects if I need something like this. 
All right, uh, did I actually copy that text? Um, let me, uh, yeah, let me define my function here. I'm gonna call this something like uh, my for each or something like that. And it is gonna take the same, uh, same like style of function. Uh, it is gonna take a, like the same arguments rather. It is gonna take an array and it is gonna take a, um, a function that acts on this. Um, I'm going to, let's see, for ease of testing, because uh, printing to the console does take more time than people sometimes think. But I'm gonna say uh, var words, now let's say var array equals array create. Uh, the size can be 100,000, the value can be like, I don't know, 10 or something like that. I don't really care what the value is. Uh, we're gonna create an array of size 100,000 and it's gonna be populated by the number 10. Um, the thing that we're going to be doing to test this, the speed of this uh, array for each function is just gonna be uh, how about... See, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. I, I wanna sum them up, but I can't just say like var n equals zero or var, var like totally equals zero. Um, and then total plus equals value here because uh, like total belongs to a different scope than this function running here. Um, Game Maker does not offer something like JavaScript closures for uh, local variable scope in functions like this, which probably a good thing more often than not because that can lead to some impressive levels of spaghetti. Um, to keep it simple, I'm just gonna say total plus equals value. We're gonna sum up this array. All right, functional programmers have been known to have opinions about these things, and I know I'm going to be getting an earful about it in the comments if I don't address it verbally. The operation that I'm doing here is probably better suited to the array reduce function that has also been added. Uh, there's a couple of functional programming-like operations that have been added for arrays in GameMaker in the same update for reducing and mapping and uh, filtering and whatever to arrays. I am not trying to time trial those right now. I am trying to time trial the array for each function. I will probably also make videos on the, the other functional programming functions later. So for all the data-driven programming nerds out there, I hope this one makes you happy. I'm going to uh, do a little time trial uh, code here. So get timer is going to return the system time at the start of this function. Uh, show uh, this is going to return the difference between the time at the start. I want string here and the time at the end. And uh, we can uh, we can do the same thing with my for each down here. So we can we can time this code uh, for the built-in version of the function and for the version that I wrote in GML. So for those of you who don't know. Uh, who don't know why I'm making such a big deal about this. Anytime, or pretty much anytime anyway, uh, you have the option to write a function yourself or you have the option to use a version of the same function that's built into the engine. Uh, the version of the function that's built into the engine will just win by a landslide uh, because while GML isn't like as slow as people sometimes think it is and it's not as slow as it has been in past versions of GameMaker, um, it's still not nearly as fast as something like a uh, the same program built in C. Uh, which the game maker runtime is and if you have the option to uh, have the game maker runtime do the same task as you would do uh, What with the for loop and calling the function and that sort of thing? I can actually make this a little nicer um, Like this so that uh, my version of the function doesn't have to uh, call array length every time anyway the uh, the built-in version of the function should uh, win by a landslide in a foot race against my version. Uh, we can see that, yes, in the um, in the console down here, the uh, GML version is about uh, twice as fast. Or, or maybe I should say my version of the uh, array search is about half as fast as the built-in GML version.
And you could probably squeeze a little bit more performance out of this if you really wanted to. If you're one of those people who like to do like repeat over ar array length. Um, then you might be able to squeeze a little bit more performance out of um, the GML array function. But as you can see, it's not really significant. Um, if I were to run this in the YYC, uh, I will also be interested in seeing how long this takes because some amount of the time that it, call, that it takes the uh, built-in array for each function to run is going to be in invoking this GML function 100,000 times. And I'm curious if uh, running this in the YYC is going to noticeably change the results because the YYC should change the uh, the like invocation time of that callback function over there. And that's going to take another moment. The recording may or may not drop a few frames while it does that because compilation is a little expensive. Uh, nope, the ratio is about the same. So here it came down to about um, really about 10 times faster uh, than the... Um, than the non-YYC version. So the built-in array for each function took uh, 2.89 milliseconds to do that operation, and my version took about four and a half. Uh, so it's still about a, it still can complete the same operation in about half the amount of time as, uh, as my version over here. Obviously, uh, your mileage may vary if you're doing something more complicated in the callback function here in the function that's being called on every element of the array, then it's obviously gonna take longer and that's going to skew towards um, the built-in version of the function not being, like, not having the same speed advantage uh, over the, um, the version that you wrote because more of the uh, time that it takes to do the operation is going to be in the, in the callback. There are some limitations. Uh, the, uh, the fact that you, like, variable scope doesn't allow you to access uh, local variables outside the callback function is a bit of a, um, a bit of an irritation, but that's, that would have been the case in the, uh, the old manually written uh, GML for each loops. And I think that's it. I'm glad to see that this seems to be a feature that was added to GameMaker that seems to not have any like noticeable bugs in it. Um, I'm sure that at least one of the um, one of the new array functions that was added is going to do something that it shouldn't. Um, if you want the, uh, the full list, I will have these release notes in the description of the video. Although they should hit the stable version of GameMaker in probably about a month. I can tell you from experience that a number of these are uh, functions that I often find myself wanting to uh, to write manually in Game Maker projects because they're just handy utility functions uh, to get the last element of an array or to create an array. Uh, I just saw it a minute ago. Uh, array create extended to create an array uh, with each uh, index in the array, not set to a specific value like you would have with array create, but to uh, to call a function on it instead. So sort of like an array for each. Uh, at the beginning when you create the array. Uh, but I'm not going to get too far into these now. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Uh, I hope you are as intrigued by this as I am. If you're one of the game maker developers who just has like a massive file of like library functions that you carry between every single project, I hope that these new array functions are able to eliminate some of those for you. Uh, because again, having them built into the engine is um, nice and convenient and performs a little bit better. But otherwise, I'm going to end this off here, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Gidry, Kiexi, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.